Hello, welcome to another module in this massive open online course. So in this module, let us start to looking into another very important aspect where one can employ the principles of linear algebra that is vectors and matrices and so on, including probability and the notion of probabilistic evolution. And that is in the very important area of stochastic processes. How does linear algebra help us better understand uh, the evolution of something that is random uh, with respect to random in nature with respect to time. Okay. So, we would long like to understand the evolution of a stochastic process okay. and uh, what is the meaning of that? This is the probabilistic model to describe the evolution of a system in time. So, this is essentially a probabilistic model for evolution of a system in time and uh, for instance example one can think of several of these things that are evolving in time for instance one can think of the temperature of a place one can think of things such as the stock price how is the stock price changing with respect to time for instance the stock index how is it evolving with respect to time definitely there is something random about it right and uh, the inventory for instance the inventory of certain objects or the inventory of uh, cars in a warehouse the inventory of you know any number of things the computers or phones uh, at a at a shop and so on and so forth uh, one can also think about the status of a machine for instance you have an industry with a large number of operating machines what is the status of this machine how is this evolving is it operating uh, or is it broken in the sense that does it need to be is it faulty does it need to be repaired and so on so how are these these so if you there are so many things around us that are whose status right or whose state as we might say is changing randomly with respect to and how do we characterize the evolution so that in, in, in the end of it we would like to make better predictions about how these are going to behave in the future and they, these have definitely a lot of use right so essentially the way to look at it is you have a large number of random things such as for instance you have the temperature you have the stock price or you can say the stock index other financial metrics such as the inflation rate how is this evolving uh, then you have uh, the inventory for instance you can have the inventory of objects such as for instance cars in a warehouse computers in fact any number of items that are essentially being sold then you have the machine status functional or is it faulty if it is faulty then it needs to be repaired with what problem I mean what do you think right how is it going to be evolving how is the status of this machine going to evolve and so on and so forth. So all of these quantities if you can see uh, now the characteristic of all of these quantities is that these are random in nature but at the same time uh, 
there is a certain sense of correlation with respect to the past. What we mean by that is, that is of course, one cannot make a completely, one cannot completely determine with 100 percent accuracy what the temperature is going to be tomorrow, but based on the past history, right? based on how the temperature has evolved in the past couple of days, one can make a reasonably accurate prediction regarding what the, for instance, regarding what the temperature is going to be in the near future. For instance, the temperature for the past couple of days is around 30 degrees, let us say 35 degrees, 36, it is varying around 35. It is highly unlikely that the temperature tomorrow is suddenly going to jump to something like 50 degrees or something of that sort, right. You expect it to be, it is random, we cannot completely determine it, but at the same time one can get a reasonably good idea regarding its next, uh, regarding the next uh, step uh, one might say or the next state in this evolution based on the history and that is the key over here, so, right. So, essentially the idea is this is uh, all these are essentially what we call as stochastic processes. So, strictly speaking a stochastic process, what is a stochastic process? So, a stochastic process is essentially, a, this is a probabilistic model, what is this? This is a probabilistic to describe the evolution of a system in time. right this is a probabilistic model to describe the key here is that it is a probabilistic model right please understand this it is a probabilistic model to describe the evolution of a system in time and all of these for instance if you look at all of these that is your temperature stock price inflation rate all of these these are stochastic processes right these are the examples of stochastic processes. Now, what we have just looked at, for instance, you have the temperature, right? The stock price, etcetera. Now, the point here is now this stochastic process can be modeled. this can be modeled as a a stochastic process can be modeled as a time series that is we can denote it by for instance x n that is this as for n equal to 0 1 2 so on that is n greater than equal to 0 and more specifically this is essentially what we call as the state of the system or the state of the process and uh, these are nothing but your time instants the, your x n these are essentially the time instants which you can clearly see these are discrete in nature over here. So, this is essentially what is known as a uh, discrete time stochastic process or you can call it as a discrete time chain or essentially a discrete
For instance, one might look at what is this n can be anything. For instance, the unit of n, n can be either hours, minutes, seconds, days and so on. For instance, if you're looking at the stock index, you would probably like to look at the opening stock index every day or you would probably like to look at the closing stock index at every day. That would be a discrete time. So here we have x0 on day 0, x1 on day 1, x2 on day 2. You would like to probably look at the inventory of cars on an hour by hour basis. So that would be x0 at the 0th hour to begin with, x1 after hour 1, x2 after hour 2 and so on. Right. So it depends the time index, the unit of time can be anything. So this is basically happening from time instant to time. And you can also have a continuous time stochastic process. But of course, that is a different topic of discussion that is evolving continuously in time. That is x of t. That is instead of x of n, if you have x of t, then this becomes a continuous. time this becomes a continuous time stochastic process for us we will look at discrete time stochastic processes because these can be very conveniently analyzed using linear algebra and matrices uh, same can be done also for continuous time but it's a little bit more complicated right and we want to look at the applications of linear algebra in the analysis of these discrete time stochastic processes right and uh, now this xn cannot take any arbitrary value but the key here is xn can take values uh, belonging to a set s or a space s and this is termed as the state space so xn is essentially the state of, of the system. The notion of a state is very important over here. So, you have the state which is given by xn and this state can belong to a set S which is essentially the space of states or we will call it as the state space. For instance, once again, let us take xn, let us take a simple example, example xn is the temperature, let us say xn equals the temperature. Then one can say realistically xn belongs to minus 10 degrees to 50 degrees centigrade. Although in principle it can be really low, go to the absolute 0, but that is in practice typically that is not there for instance in a typical place you have temperature going from minus 10 degrees centigrade to 50 degrees, and that is reasonably good enough and you can further discretize it for instance we might not be interested in measuring the it to a 10 to the power of minus 6 or 10 to the power of minus 7 accuracy we might be simply interested in measuring the temperature to 0.1 degree centigrade accuracy that might practically be sufficient so you can further refine this so let's say this is your state space You can further quantize this for convenience and think of your state space as the set for instance uh, 50 degree centigrade, 49.9 degree centigrade, 49.8 degree centigrade and so on. So this is essentially a 0.1 degree accuracy. right? accurate to 0.1 degree centigrade that is what we call as the step size and so on and so forth. So this you essentially have a finite state, state space that is the idea. Right. So, of course, this is the original one is an infinite state space because it can lie anywhere between minus 10 degrees to 50 degrees centigrade. From that, by quantization, you get a finite state space. Right. Now, similarly for the stock index, let us say another example, let us say xn is the stock index, then technically again xn can lie anywhere between 0 to infinity, right? It including the value 0, this is 
remember this is technically true, but at the same time I would say this is impractical, because we know the stock index typically takes values around a certain neighborhood where it is. So, let us say and we can further quantize it for instance, let us say we can say the stock index belongs to the set 48,000. 48,010 steps of 10, 48,020 and similarly you can take lower values also right. So, you can take lower values also and this might be reasonably good enough right. So, step size and this might be very suitable for a practical analysis or practical case study right. Because if you start with so this is suitable for this is suitable for practical analysis. So you might start with infinite state space, but one can reduce it to a reasonable practical finite state space that makes it easier to study and make deductions in practice and the step size chosen can be reasonable. So, that your deductions might not be uh, it can, it can be fairly accurate to the one that you would obtain using uh, uh, your uh, infinite states all right as the step size goes smaller and smaller naturally you will have a large number of states uh, the, uh, the granularity becomes finer and naturally this model becomes closer and closer to the actual one with an infinite states. Right. So, that is the idea and uh, now the point is we would like to characterize the evolution of this x n. So, how to characterize now we would like to the idea of this stochastic process is we would like to make comments or essentially we would like to make intelligent comments right. We would like to characterize the evolution we would like to characterize the evolution of x n ok. So, given the time series more specifically given x 0 x 1 up to x n let us say the question we want to ask is now this is a time series we all know what is a time series basically series of observations or series of signal samples in time. Now, given this time series, now can we predict for instance, can we predict and can we of course, it is impossible to say x n plus 1 is exactly going to be this curve, but can we predict with reasonable accuracy in a probabilistic sense that is the idea can we predict this in a probabilistic sense I will just I will I will characterize it going forward what we mean by this. Now, of course, the key idea here is that it depends on x n plus 1 depends on x 1, x 0, x 1 up to x n. This is essentially what we term as the history of the evolution, the past. Right. So, although x n plus 1 is random strictly speaking, but the past evolution can tell us something about x n plus 1 right that is the whole idea. So, how can you predict so the question so the more interesting and the log probably logically sound question or uh, 
the question that can help us better characterize the xn plus 1 is the following that is can you say something about xn plus 1 having observed x0 x1 up to xn right of course if you want to have to make an arbitrary prediction then one can also make that but that is going to generally be way off but rather in many situations one is able to make better predictions because one evolution and that is what we want to uh, essentially capitalize on right so what can you say about xn x uh, xn plus 1 having observed x0 x1 up to xn so can we talk about this can we make this prediction in a probabilistic sense so now consider the states now since we are talking about the state evolution remember this is nothing but a state evolution right and uh, we have the time instance 1 up to n now let us say s has the states it is a finite state space these are the states that is you can say s is equal to s i such that 1 less than equal to i less than equal to n where n is the capital n is the number of states this capital n is the number of and now one can ask the question what is the probability x n plus 1 equal to s i this is the question that one can ask but this is not very meaningful because x n plus 1 depends on x 0 x 1 up to x n. So, this question itself not very useful it is not it, it is meaningful I would not say it is me not meaningful it is not very useful to begin with all right one can also ask this question no doubt and one can also answer this question as we are going to start with but it is not very useful because it uh, it because it is uh, uh, one can look at it as the following because you have a past history and you are not capitalizing on that past history you are not using it to your advantage. So, the more useful and interesting question that can allow you to better answer this question is the following which is what is the probability x n plus 1 equal to s i given remember this is a conditional probability given x n and remember I am writing this in a particular order I am writing it in inverse order of time right given. So, remember this is a conditional probability you might have seen this before that is given these past what is prediction what is the prediction for time instant n plus 1 that is essentially what we would like to given the given the past evolution of this what is your prediction regarding x n plus 1 and of course here you can see for any such time process now the one thing that you have to observe is interestingly uh, the farther the past the less relevance it has to x n plus 1 although the past is relevant right probability x n plus 1 equal to s j right 
Now, the point you have to ask is farther the past, right? So, for instance, these samples are farther in the past. Farther the past, lower the relevance. Then this is an interesting aspect because of course, the entire the entire past is relevant, but speaking about the degree of relevance for instance, if you are looking at the stock price evolution, you can consider the entire past of the stock index, right. You can consider it yesterday, day before yesterday, one month ago, one year ago, five years ago, ten years ago and so on, right. But realistically speaking, how much influence is the stock price that is let us say 10 years ago going to have on the stock price tomorrow, right. So, you can see that there is although there is infinite memory to so as in this system so as to speak because it depends on the past, but the farther you go into the past the relevance is lower and lower. The immediate impact the greatest relevance the greatest impact is basically of the immediate previous samples. So, the greatest relevance here you have to understand most relevant are the immediately previous samples. most relevant are the immediately previous samples, right. We would like to say x n, x n minus 1, maybe couple of time delays, right. Of course, if you go to x n minus 30, x n minus 40, they might also have an impact, but the degree of impact, the level of impact on x n might be significantly lower. In fact, in an extreme situation on the most useful scenarios and one of the most tractable cases is where x n depends only significantly only on x n minus 1. Right. So, let us characterize that aspect. So, let us say in many situations we have or we are reasonably happy looking at the immediate dependence on the immediate past in many I would say practical scenarios. The probability what happens only x n is needed to reliably only x n is needed to reliably characterize x n plus 1 that is we would like to say probability x n plus 1 equal to s j given x n x n minus 1 x 0 this is equal to probability x n plus 1 equal to s j given x given x n that is only the past only immediate past or only current state we would like to say only current state is required for future or required to characterize only current state is required to characterize the future evolution that is 
we require only knowledge of x and x n rather than x n minus 1, x n minus 2, so on to characterize how it is going to evolve from this point onwards. That is the future, that is the current state serves as a uh, as a partition or you can say current st st stands as a decoupler, right. So, essentially if you look at as the time evolution of this system, so you have a system that is evolving with respect to time and here you have time instant, your time instant n and then you have the n plus 1, then you have the n plus 2 and here you have the n minus 1 and you have the n minus 2 and this property what it says is that if then you know the state at time instant n right. So, we know state at n. Then the prediction of evolution so far, the prediction that is the evolution henceforth, the evolution depends only on x n that is the future is decoupled from the past that is if I know what is my state at time instant and I do not need to know about the past, I do not need to know what is the past history, I do not need to know how the system arrived at the state x n because have uh, because having now known x n the future depends only on x n irrespective of the past irrespective of how it arrived at the state x n. So, the future so one way to say this is the future becomes decoupled from the past. So, the future becomes decoupled from the past. And this property is termed as the Markov property. This property is termed as is a very important property. This is termed as the Markov property. And uh, this is the name of a person, name of a scientist. And such a discrete, such a stochastic process is termed because we are looking at discrete time stochastic process. This becomes a discrete time Markov chain. Or what we also call as a DTMC. So, this essentially becomes a discrete time Markov chain. So, what is your DTMC or discrete time Markov chain? A DTMC is nothing but two things. It is essentially a system evolving in time that is your stochastic process plus the all important Markov property. So, a stochastic process with the Markov property and what is the Markov property? That is remember if you want to is a very important and very easy property to also understand intuitively that is probability that x n plus 1 equals to say it x j given x n x n minus 1 x 0 this depends only on x n that is this is equal to probability of x n plus 1 equal to x s j given x n that is the temperature tomorrow that is if you know what it means is for instance if you know temperature today that is 
sufficient to make a prediction about the temperature tomorrow. You do not need about the predict temperature yesterday, the day before yesterday and so on. Well, although it might seem practically, uh, how do you put it? Uh, although it might not hold complete, sometimes it might hold true, sometimes it might be an approximation that is made practice. What it says is this, if this property is good assumption, right? Because having known the temperature today, you can make a reasonably good uh, prediction or a reasonably good inference regarding, regarding the temperature tomorrow. Although, the point here is sometimes it might be accurate and sometimes it might simply be an approximation for convenience. But essentially, this property, uh, if it holds, this is what is termed as a Markov property. Okay? And it is a very useful approximation in many practical situations and also holds in many systems. All right? So, essentially the conditional probability what it says is this conditional probability depends only on the, the conditional probability on de, depends on how you look at it depend, depending on if you look at x n as the current state conditional probability It depends only on Excel. The conditional probability depends only on Excel, right? And further, these probabilities are often fixed in time. Further, the probabilities are often fixed in time. which again is a reasonable assumption to make that is what we are saying is the probability x n plus 1 equals s j given x n does not depend on n that is we will have this is equal to probability if you set n equal to 1 or n equal to 0 this will be probability x 1 equal to s j given s 0 which is probability x 2 equal to s j given x 1 and so on and so forth that is these are not function of n that is what you are trying to say this is not a function of n. So, not a function not a function of n all right so this is known as the times homogeneous all right so this is known as essentially such as such a discrete time marco chain this is known as essentially being time homo genius homogeneous with respect to time and you can also say these are stationary these properties are these probabilities are stationary with respect to time and this is what we can denote as uh, we will come to that later for instance if we have the probabilities I will come to that later uh, in fact if you have these probabilities probability x n plus 1 equal to s j given x n equal to s i for a time homogeneous system these can be derived by the quantity p i j which you can see does not depend on time right you can see does not depend on time does not depend on time these are also known as the one step transition probabilities right so these are known as if you are looking at 
that is looking at xn plus the prediction that is look at looking at the probability for uh, xn plus 1 equals lies xn plus 1 uh, is basically the state uh, the state at time n plus 1 is sj given the state at time n is si that is denoted by the quantity pij which does not depend on the specific value of specific time instant n this is known as the one step transition probability because you are looking at the transition from n to n plus 1 right so it does not depend on time and transition from this looks at the transition from n plus 1 so these are known as basically these are what are known as the one step transition probabilities this is known as the one step transition probability all right so this marco chain the discrete time as we are going to see in the subsequent modules this dtmc can be effectively characterized be by these one step transition probabilities because we said in a marco chain only the current state is enough to make a prediction or to enough to characterize the future evolution of the system and therefore one can ask the question given the current state what given the current state is si what is the probability that the next state is sj that is characterized by this one step pro, uh, transition probability. So, this one step transition probabilities can characterize fully characterize the evolution of a DTMC that is the essential. So, this one step transition probabilities can fully characterize the evolution of the one step transition probabilities can fully characterize the evolution of the discrete time Markov these probabilities transition probabilities can fully characterize the evolution of this discrete time Markov chain. Now, how can one do this? We will discuss that thoroughly in the subsequent modules that is starting with these one step transition probabilities. How can you infer the various properties and how can you make various predictions and how can you characterize the various aspects of the evolution of this stochastic process which is also a Markov process. So, this is a discrete time Markov chain. All right. So, we will stop here and continue with this discussion in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much.